What's up guys? Welcome to this video. This is a very important question we're gonna solve together today. So let's begin. If S and, uh, and T are positive integers such that S over T is equal to 64.12, which of the following could be the remainder when S is divided by T? So when S is divided by T, he's asking me what is the remainder? So uh, when s is divided by t, so we can write it this way, s is equal to a times t plus r, okay? So a here is a constant integer, and r is an integer, and it is, it is the remainder, okay? So this form is very important to know, okay? So let's begin, let, let's see this problem in depth. So S divided by T is equal to 64.12. So it's equal to 64.12. So let me try to write this one and to transform this one into something similar to this. So if I do some cross multiplication here, I, I get S is equal to 64.12 T. Okay, so I want to transform this to something similar to this one okay so i can write here s is equal to 64 t plus 0 0.12 t okay why i wrote it this way because i want an integer here behind the t which is 64 so because a here is an integer so i want it to be an integer so this is that's why I wrote it 64t plus 0.12t. Okay, so now I have an integer a and I have the remainder here r. So this one is very similar to this one. Okay, so now here 64 it's an integer and here is the remainder. So the remainder here is equal, remainder is equal to 0.12t. So, and t is an integer. This is very important. So, which one of these answers could be the, re the remainder? So, could be the, re for example, if the remainder is 2, okay, if r is equal to 2, so 2 is equal to 0 0.12 times t. So, now if I want to compute t, t is equal to 2 divided by 0 0.12, it's equal to 200 divided by 12, I multiplied by 100. The numerator and 100 in the denominator so i if i need to simplify this it's 100 divided by 6 it's equal to 50 divided by 3 so it's equal to 16.6 so t here is not an integer so and we know that t is an integer so if the remainder is 2 t when when i calculate t i get 16.6 so it's not an integer so the remainder is definitely not 2 okay so i repeat here is the remainder is equal to 0 0.12 t and i know that t is an integer so t must be an integer so i need to choose one of the answers and one of them would give me t as an integer so i need to find which one of them when i put it here when i replace r by it I will get an integer t so i have to try them and usually when i try i uh, i i try uh, answers d and e first okay so this is a small tactic uh, you should know uh, let's let me begin by e so if r equal 45 so 45 is equal to 0 0.12 t let me see if t is an integer okay so t is equal to 45 divided by 0 0.12 so I will multiply by 100, 100, so, and here 12. Okay, so I can do the simplification uh, easily. Okay, so now I will divide by three. So it's 1,500 and 12 divided by three, it's four. Now I, I, will, I divide by two, so it's 750 divided by two. I divided by two here and by two here. And now 700 and, uh, 750 divided by 2 is 375. So t is equal to an integer. So when uh, r is equal to 45, t is equal to an integer. So everything is coherent. So uh, this is the answer. 
E is the answer because let me let me repeat. I took so S is equal to A times T plus R. A must be an integer and the remainder must be an integer. Okay, and T is also an integer. So I took this this form here and I transform it to something similar to this. I I had this. Uh, form okay so here we have an integer plus the remainder this is the remainder so which one of these is the remainder i have to respect the condition that t is an integer okay so i have to try the answers to see which one will give me t as an integer so r is equal to 0.12 t I, I i will replace r by the values here and the one uh, that gives me t as an integer is the, uh, the the correct answer okay so the answer here is e hope it's clear thank you for watching this video in order to help you ace the gmat i decided to offer you for free my ultimate gmat probability course you can find this course in the description of this video probability is one of the most important parts of the gmat quant section this part is very difficult and many students struggle with it in this course, I will give you the best strategy to tackle any probability question and I will show you how to apply this strategy to more than 40 different practice questions. Once you finish this course, you'll be able to solve any probability question that encounters you in the GMAT. First, I will introduce you to combinations, arrangements and permutations. Then we'll solve together more than 40 GMAT questions of different level of difficulty and I will show you step by step how to solve them in the simplest way possible. Once you master the methods I teach in this course, you'll be able, starting of tonight, to not only solve any GMAT probability problem, but also to solve them quickly and this will help you save a lot of time during the test. Click on the link in the description to get this unique free course.